Hi everybody, welcome back to CDOIQ 2024 here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. You're watching theCUBE's day two coverage. My name is Dave Vellante. Really excited to have Doug Laney back on theCUBE, CUBE alum. He's an innovation fellow uh, for data and analytics strategy now at West Monroe, and he's joined by Karsten Daynar, who is the CDO, is the Chief Data and Analytics Officer at Vienna Insurance Group, VIG. Folks, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so much for coming on. Great to be with you again, Dave. So you guys, it's awesome to see you again. We ran into each other, you know, the night of day one, and so glad we could make this happen, Doug. Thank you. Uh, uh, you guys had a breakout session uh, today. Mm -hmm. uh, describe that, if you would. Yeah, so we wanted to share um, the work that we've done at Westman Row with uh, Vienna Insurance on developing a uh, pretty sophisticated uh, operating model for the data office that, that Carson's now leading. And so uh, first we actually helped him in uh, um, making the case, the business case for the data office, getting that established. Carson himself got installed as the chief data and analytics officer, and now we're helping him establish um, and, and stand up the, the data office and the entire operating model that he'll talk about on how it incorporates um, a lot of different uh, entities throughout their, their portfolio. Yeah, and I have a yeah. copy of the presentation that you guys gave today, a very detailed and comprehensive model, so congratulations it on was putting, a lot that, to cover in putting that minutes, together, yeah. right, <laughs> and uh, now you've got to go implement it, but right. describe, Carson, describe your role before we get into that. <clears throat> yeah, it's an interesting environment, so uh, Doug talks about we are an insurance mm -hmm. group, we are a big insurance group, a market leader on the uh, Central Eastern uh, environment, um, we are operating 50 insurance companies in, in 30 countries uh, and the core value is local entrepreneurship mm -hmm. uh, and it's very difficult to steer them so we have always to get the local buy-in to get commitment and to bring everything uh, to the earth and mm -hmm. we can't operate with directives from group sites so that's, that's our group environment. Uh, and my role uh, includes everything you can imagine mm -hmm. about data and analytics, including AI, Gen AI, all the topics, mm -hmm. governance, compliance, uh, ethics, everything mm -hmm. included. So Karsten has a lot to balance. He has to balance not only playing both offense and defense as a CDO, but balance the independence mm -hmm. of this federated approach to, um, to all of the entities within their portfolio. Uh, and balance the responsibilities across the, C, uh, the CIO organization, they have an innovation organization, um, and, and other parts of the, the operating, the overall operating model. So what was the process to establish, what was the impetus actually to establish the office? Uh, and who was involved, who were the stakeholders? And I'm curious, Doug, is that we at the point, so first, Karsten, if you would answer that, and what do you see with other clients in terms of have most established an office? Have they not established an office? And it seems like a critical point in the next step, which is AI, but how, how, what was the impetus? Um, I think the trigger was, was more the defense part mm -hmm, to establish mm -hmm. such an office, you know, we are insurance business, it's very conservative, mm -hmm. so everything is about compliance, uh, so that was the starting point. And we tried from the beginning to extend the scope to the offense, mm -hmm. so to produce a added value with, with the data, to do data monetization, uh, that was our goal from the mm -hmm. beginning. And we shifted the mindset of the uh, uh, board of directors from the defense side to the offense side. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and what was the process that you guys went through? And I presume you guys assisted. What was the mm -hmm. process, what, what did that look like uh, to, to establish this? Because <coughs> to my second part of that question, yeah. is, it a, is it the case where a lot of clients don't have an, a, a data office and are trying to, to establish that? Um, it seems like many organizations would right. and or need to because of the, the mandate for AI. Yeah, so uh, just basically Karsten reached out uh, I had done some research on the role of the CDO and the business case for the CDO, um, which yielded some really interesting insights about how organizations that have chief data officers um, operate more efficiently and, and better. I presented that actually at this, this conference here a couple of years ago, 
Carson had seen some of that work, reached out to me and asked if he could use it to help make the, the business case um, within VIG. Right? Mm -hmm. um, but basically the, the research showed us that there really are two kinds of, of CDOs. There's a, a, f a full CDO that has responsibility for the organization's data assets um, and, and analytics sometimes. And then there's what we call a CDO light, which is uh, more of a advisory kind of um, responsibility. Um, whereas the, where the CDO doesn't really take on all of the data related responsibilities and resources in, in the organization. So uh, Carson's kind of got a bit of a hybrid model. He has more responsibility than a CDO light, but he's keeping the model very federated um, because that's the way their culture works. Okay, so this, yeah. the establishment is a, f a federated model that is what, like a dotted line type of thing into the... Yes, yes, a lot of dotted lines. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but w what's really unique, uh, I think, about Karsten compared to many CDOs is he actually is a peer of the CIO. Okay, so we uh, see a lot of CDOs reporting to the CIO, right. which we think is, is actually a pretty suboptimal. Um, data sh should be managed and leveraged as an independent asset than, than technology. I've written about this over, over the years. Right. Um, so Carson has, has uh, the, the board has actually embraced that concept where the, the data office is a peer of the, of the CIO. So when you have a lot of dotted lines, you obviously have to get alignment on the fundamental operating principles, the standards, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. So what are the core fundamentals of, of the model? So if you are looking on the holding side, on, on the central office side, uh, it it's, was very difficult to, to align all the overlaps. So we mm -hmm. have, by example, we have overlaps in the HR department with training, with data literacy programs. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity management, for sure we have an overlap there uh, with opportunities, with Gen mm -hmm. AI topics and so on. We have the IT department and we agreed with the IT departments that we are governing mm -hmm. all the use cases from business perspective. So mm -hmm. we are not governing uh, AI systems or something like that over the group. We are governing use cases and that's in my responsibility. And if there's a demand outside of the use cases and mm -hmm. technical demand, we bring it into the IT process. Mm -hmm. So IT is only uh, responsible for the tech stack. Mm -hmm. We are responsible for the business use cases, for the models, for the data content, for the guard of governance, for the ethics, all this mm -hmm. stuff. So we are created on on very clear responsibilities and uh, there's also an innovation executive right we have an innovation executive uh, on the level of board of directors mm -hmm. and that's maybe as well interesting thing mm -hmm. uh, doug said currently i'm reporting as a peer directly to the coo and the ceo is uh, in the board of directors and in September, I will move to the Chief Innovation Officer, who is as well a member of the Board of Directors. So it will get much more, uh, I would say, offense mm -hmm. drive. Then ah, we connect okay. that with, uh, with mm -hmm. the topics of ecosystems, uh, platforms, innovations, uh, to transform maybe the business model as well. That's interesting because I would think, because you, you, you mentioned it's suboptimal to have the CDO reporting to the to the CIO. I would think it's actually, from an operationalizing standpoint, it's optimal to have the CDO reporting to the COO. We're going to operationalize, especially when we're playing defense. And now, it, if I understood it correctly, you're shifting to uh, no, the West Coast offense, <laughs> where <laughs> Very you use a U.S. <laughs> uh, analogy, where you're <coughs> now part of the innovation group. But those are the pillars. It's sort of the, mm -hmm. the governance, the, the technology, and then the innovation. Is that right? Yeah. Um, what are the, the four, do you want to talk about the four pillars of uh, the program? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we can do so, we mm -hmm. can do so. So I think uh, it's no surprise our main pillars are data governance, uh, data management and architecture, and data analytics on mm -hmm. the other side, uh, which uh, should ensure that we get added value at the end. Mm -hmm. And as I said, uh, the whole AI topic, Gen AI is included in our analytics mm -hmm. pillar. And overall, we have uh, for sure strategy planning, uh, all mm -hmm. this uh, stuff we are organizing in our office. Um, and that's how we, we manage mm -hmm. The topics, we have some overarching functions like uh, compliance, like uh, training and data literacy, 
uh, and change management, uh, which brings all the topics together mm -hmm. and ensure that we really get the buy-in from our daughter companies and from all the stakeholders. Because I could see Gen AI, I could definitely see it be part of the analytics because you get some immediate value there. I could also see a very tight alignment with governance. Mm -hmm. um, I could also see some organizations put it under data management. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how do you help make that decision? How, do you, how does an organization make that decision? What are the criteria? As to where to place those, yep, those I, responsibilities? I, if I understood it correctly, you, you <coughs> were saying that Gen AI fits inside of the analytics yes. pillar. Yes, yes, yes. Right? But I could see it aligning with some of the other ones, particularly governance. Mm -hmm. um, I, and as I say, some organizations put it into the data management pillar. Yeah, it's still early days to see how Gen AI can support data governance, data quality initiatives, data profiling, um, so. Ah, yeah. I was thinking more the opposite. All right. You have to have data governance before you can actually I implement see. your Gen AI. So there are two sides and to so that coin, yes. Yeah. It's, it's, in, it's, it's bringing my defense to, <laughs> to my <laughs> offense kind right. of thing. Right. Um, but okay, but so. Um, yeah. It's an interesting question, <laughs> so, you know, uh, we are operating in Europe with the European Union AI Act, so we have regulations for that, and mm -hmm. so we have a big mandate to start with the AI governance, and so we drafted the AI governance, we uh, mm -hmm. wrote a policy, and we add afterwards the data governance mm -hmm. here. And you, you can't divide it because you have data, you put data in a model and the model produces again data. You have data governance at the beginning, you have data governance at the end, and you have AI governance in the middle. So everything belongs together and I think it makes really sense mm -hmm. uh, to see it as a whole and not as two different processes. T take me back to the beginning. When did this all start? What was the, the journey? When did you reach out to me? Last May or so, I think? Uh, yeah. April. Yeah. April, maybe. April. Okay, so last spring, a <laughs> year plus. Mm -hmm. And when, when did you, uh, so you get the kind of PDIM, right? The planning design implementation. <laughs> when did you, have you, you, so obviously you've implemented, have you gone the implementation? Yeah, so you're at some kind of maturity level. Right. Uh, help, help us understand that. Yeah, so yeah, why don't you talk about where we are now and kind of the next steps throughout the, this year? Yeah, maybe to talk again about the whole story. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sure. we started with a pre-concept, mm -hmm. uh, with this business case to convince the board to establish uh, the office and, and my mm -hmm. CDIO role. And this was approved mm -hmm. uh, uh, in July uh, last year, uh, when we had some mm -hmm. onboarding procedures, some planning procedures, and we right. started the project together with Mest Monroe. Mm -hmm in September last year, and we had really a mm -hmm. tough program, and uh, we finalized that in, in four months. Mm -hmm. uh, we started uh, searching the local stakeholders, so we had no clue who are our peers in the group companies. So we wrote to the CEOs, to the CIOs, please give us a single point of contact for our activities. We had to create a directory of who are the data leaders within uh, really? each of these 50 <laughs> entities throughout Europe. So, uh, so you identified the champions right. that are going to uh, yes, bring this yes, forward. Yes, and then yes. the next step was to interview them and survey them on their levels of maturity. So we used West Monroe's data and analytics maturity model, um, kind of created a customized version of it for them, and extended it with some questions around their uh, propensity to change as well. And based on the results of those, those surveys and interviews, we organized all of the 50 um, entities into five different cohorts that each had similar levels of maturity and receptiveness to change. And then so we can communicate and collaborate with each of them at the, at the right level. Yeah. Did that necessitate an organizational change or mm -hmm. was this a sort of a virtual cohort? It's entirely, entirely virtual, yeah. Okay, so then the follow up would be then, how do you make it stick? <laughs> 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 what's, the, what's the incentive? Maybe it is carrot and stick, but, but what have you learned from that process and, and maybe uh, well, some other experiences? You know, when we did the, uh, think about that for a moment, but when we did this, the surveys and the, and the maturity uh, interview, we got about an 84% hit rate on organizations that really wanted to participate they want this, in the yeah. data office. Okay. They, they felt they needed it, they wanted the support, they wanted to collaborate. Um, there's an overarching initiative at Vienna Insurance 
um, to collaborate and communicate and cooperate better throughout the organization, and it's something that everybody's looking to participate in. So we got a really good response rate. So that there. wasn't a problem. I mean, it's no. like you got tickets to the soccer no, final. No, but when the rubber hits the road, there, yeah. will be, there will be problems, there will be cultures, there will be politics to, to deal with. But was the, I made an inference that the reporting into the COO mm -hmm. would accelerate and support operationalizing mm -hmm. the system. Is that, a, was that, is that a correct inference? And, 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 and where are you in terms of operationalizing? Or was it some other factor that led you to shift now to the innovation group? So I, I would say we established the strategy and the roadmap and to operationalize it is, is our job now. Okay. <coughs> so, but, but you had the support of the COO, obviously, and I'm sure you still do. And the board. Yes. It's okay. This is board of directors. So was the, was it a decision to go from the COO to the innovation um, pillar because you realized it put it better off there? Or like you said, you're playing offense. O or was it, we got to make sure that the board and the COO send the message, we're going to implement, you always have to have top-down right, support, right. as we all know, as good consultants. Um, and so you, you, you were able to achieve that first step on the maturity model, mm -hmm. and now it's, like you say, you got to continue that to operationalize, but the operationalization yeah. comes from the incentives mm -hmm. On the outcomes, help yeah. me understand. Yeah, as Carson that. mentioned, there's much been much, uh, uh, much more of a shift toward using data offensively mm -hmm. to, to drive new value streams. And uh, what we found through interviewing the various entities throughout the, the company is that a lot of them have already made some really interesting and significant advances in using data in innovative ways that they want to share mm -hmm. with others and that others want to be shared with them. So. Um, it's really putting in place the structure to allow them to to share and collaborate on those models and um, yeah. and not just analytic models but also data integration and and data governance as well and I think one of the main topics uh, of innovation uh, resort is is to establish platforms to establish ecosystems and that's very closely related to data and there's a big overlap and mm -hmm. I think they wanted to bring that together. Yep. How much of the impetus and the timing a, a, a year ago, last spring, was Gen AI related? At the beginning, no. no. None. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay. <laughs> ne but now it's <laughs> but, but, but now we brought it home. So right. it was so a fight the last half year uh, to, to bring uh, Gen AI as right. well into the scope. Right. So I, I want to run some things by you. And, 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 oh, go ahead. I was going to say, part of our, our process at West Monroe is to help companies facilitate ideation of, of new uh, ways to generate value from data. So we have a pretty well-honed you know, approach to doing that. And as we go through that process, we're also looking at AI and Gen AI opportunities to leverage data, not just data science-y ones. So that's helpful yeah. mm -hmm. setup for my next right. question, which is probably my last question, because we got to go. Um, I want to run some sort of what we see by you and see if that, that fits and, and yeah. whether you're different or the same. We see about 40% of customers from our surveys with our partner ETR, about 40% are funding Gen AI mm -hmm. initiatives by stealing from other budgets. <laughs> it's not like, oh, all of a sudden we're going to get more budget to, to do this. It's, it's do more with less, <laughs> same theme. Um, we're also seeing the, uh, the ROIs get pushed out a little bit, mm -hmm. the, the payback period. Yep. Like, mm, we want to be a little bit more conservative. Mm -hmm. You know, you watch the podcast or listen to them and it's, right. oh, this is easy. Yeah. And it's not. It, and, 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 and then the other is we see a lot of what I would call, you know, small wins. Mm -hmm. um, not like big, giant, self-funding, um, you know, NPVs. Yeah. Um, is that sort of... Does that describe what you see in the field and what's happening at yeah. BIG? Well, we were talking about this with, with Tom Redman and Malcolm Hawker yeah. um, the other day and, and noted that like the early days of big data, uh, expectations are a little bit overblown as to when and how, when you're going to receive ROI and how big that ROI is. Um, and that we should be treating this as more of an R&D thing right now than um, something that's really operationalized like your analytics programs. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, good. G give you the last word, Karsten. Mm -hmm. where, where do you, what do you want to be able to say 12 months from now that you can't say today? <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting. Uh, I, I would see our, our 
more target operating model running. So mm. that would be m my goal and uh, to have everything established and to get really a uh, good feedback and a commitment from the mm -hmm. whole community. Uh, new, uh, new use cases, new right? New use cases, being for shared. sure. Mm -hmm. We are building a platform currently with Azure and Data, data Bricks to scale up the use cases around the group. So we are taking existing use cases, not new ones, existing with proven track record, and we scale it up over the whole group. And I would like to see that uh, living. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I would love to have you come back next year and see where you're at. You mentioned Databricks. Love to know <laughs> where you what you decide what you landed on with open table formats and all the governance that, uh, discussion that's going on. So, if you're here next year, let's do that. Great. All right. Thank welcome. you guys. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Dave. Thank all you. right. Keep it right there, everybody. CDO IQ 2024. You're watching the Cube's continuous coverage. This is day two. Dave Vellante for Paul Gillen and Sanjeev Mohan. We'll be right back right after this short break.